Well, hello friends. What a weird start to a reading vlog. It's Friday. It's like 4.30, just finished getting my nails done. You'll see like today's stuff after this because I have to have an intro to the vlog somehow. Oh, I worked this Friday, so that just kind of throws everything off. I went into work late because gastroparesis issues, not a fun time, been up since 2 a.m. Um, in horrific pain and then I did go to work and then someone else called in so it's just been a whole ordeal today and not a lot of fun but got my nails done and I'm really 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 like that made my whole day not the process of if you're a nail girly you know that going to sit at the nail salon is like the least fun thing in the world especially to do it every two weeks it's just like such a waste of time um, but I'm happy with how they turned out and what else? I have I have some reading updates to update you guys on, but honestly today between the chaos of work and my health and all these things, when I was driving, I was driving in silence. I didn't listen to an audiobook getting my nails done. I didn't even bring my book into the salon to read while I was waiting for my appointment. I literally just scrolled on my phone because it's been so hectic and chaotic. I just needed like blah downtime. Um, and I need to eat lunch because that's how crazy work was. It's just, it's a whole, Thing. So I'm going to make some lunch and then literally Paul's going to be home with a grocery order and whatnot. And then it's going to be time to make dinner after that, because like I said, it's literally like 430. So deep breath in, deep breath out and we'll get it all done. It'll all be okay. Tomorrow's Saturday. I don't work on Saturday this week. Uh, thank God I was supposed to, but I don't. And that's making everything a lot better. So I need to go take some headache medicine, like ASAP as well. Just another snowstorm in Michigan, the end of March. The girl is not thrilled. These nails are perfect. I'm so, so happy to have these nails back. Most perfect nails ever. You cannot do square again. No. Beautiful. Cheers. Whole Foods haul. <laughs> we got our new dinner plates. Broccolini, eggplant parmesan, and mushrooms. In I, in Go green. I interrupted Paul's story to take that video clip. Go blue. No. smoothie glasses are. Literally looks like you're drinking pee. <laughs> it's apple juice. So we hope to never ever work with horse stall mats for anything ever again because it's been a huge pain. We got a little bit of electrical done today. Um, we're going to have to have a day two to do the ceiling because we just had minimal time and finishing the floor mats took the longest. So let me show you. We ran electrical wire, like different areas. We put a couple of the things for the lights up and then we got all the flooring finished for all the corners. So, I mean, I feel like it looks a lot better. It looks like, oh, my camera's still broken. It looks like uh, the room looks a lot bigger now that all the flooring's down and I'm super, super happy with it. Paul might hate me now, but we got it done. Okay, friends, don't judge me. We're going natural today. Um, but I finally just got to a place where I can vlog for a second. It's been a very busy day. I have some cauliflower tacos cooking so I can update you guys before I eat some dinner here in a second. But I have very mixed feelings upon what I'm reading. I'm reading The Machine Crusade, I think it is, by Frank Herbert, nope, by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Don't have too many thoughts about that so far because I've made so little progress. It's really hard for me starting an audiobook on the weekend. I think I've told you guys that before. And then I did finish book two in the Mercedes Lackey book. So Heralds of Valdemar. I finished Arrow's Flight. I have some feelings about this, okay? I like Talia as a character. Now, I'm not going to like spoil anything, but Talia sent 
part of her mission um, with her training of what she's to become. She has to go be like, have this mentor situation. And the person that she's sent with is absolutely detestable, despicable. I hate him from the very first second. And there's already been like a couple things handled in this. Like I was almost under the impression that she was setting these two teenagers up in the beginning to like try to get with one another. Uh, and I think they were 13. Um, they were somewhere between the ages of 13 and 15. I don't know that it happened on the end of 15, which like, per, like that's just a little young for me to be reading about but any type of sexual situation, interaction, whatever. I don't want to be reading it from a 15, like, no, not even 15, but 13. I was like, what? Like, mm, mm. I don't know. I can't confirm for sure, but that just was like, not it for me. And then um, with book two, my huge issue is that this person that she set up with is the most mansplaining, despicable male of a character. And I'm like, why did I spend 230 pages reading this? Granted, was it that long in my life? No, but I could have done or read a million other things that was not about a man mansplaining and thinking the whole world's falling in love with him. So there's this best friend situation where he's the attractive best friend and the poor other best friend never has any girls interested in him because of course they always only fall for him and not his best friend because he is a good looking one and his best friend isn't. And I'm, like, I'm already like, I hate that trope, whether it's female, male, I don't care who it is. I'm like, okay, that's what we have to work with. So of course he thinks Talia is like head over heels in love with him and whatnot. I'm not going to like spoil things, but we have that whole aspect going on. Then he's literally never believing her, never giving her the benefit of the doubt, accusing her of things, not being there for her or supportive or helpful as you would be if you were in like a mentor mentee relationship. But then on top of it, like she's having issues controlling uh, her like type of magic per se. And he's basically just like, calm down, but not in like a calm down. It's going to be okay. Like, what are you thinking? Calm down, like rein it in. And I'm like, you ever had a man in your life, like when you're losing your, you know what, tell you to calm down, especially yelling it at you, like, sir, take a seat. We don't need you here. We don't need you at all. So he has like just bad attribute after bad attribute again and again. He's horrendous. I hate him. Like I haven't hated a character in a book this much since like Kyle or um, what's one of the other guys from Mad Ship. And granted, he doesn't do anything. He's not on that level, but like my hate for him is similar. And at the end, they're like still friendly and everything. And they just kind of like explain away. And she literally, there's this situation that was like, I don't know how to say it. It, it doesn't spoil anything in the grand scheme of things, but it is like mildly spoilers if you're going to read this. But if not, just go ahead and listen for the drama. But like she has like these empath abilities and so she's like of course the only reason that you must have been with me is because i projected it onto you and used my like emotion swaying abilities to force you to want to be with me and i was like gross and then like that he would make her feel that way and he's like no no, no that's not the case but whatever and just that whole situation i literally hated so much um so like i don't want to read book three at this point like the writing is still really well done Book two could have been really interesting and fun on this quest um, with like being forced stuck in the same cabin, like snowed in kind of trap situation, except he's literally horrid and I hate him. So I'm like, what's going to happen in book three? I think it's 230 pages, you guys. I'm on page 439 and the book ends on page 668. So yeah, it's literally like 230 pages. Should I just power through it while Paul's watching the Red Wings game today? I mean, I can't read all of it during that time. This doesn't read that quickly, even though it's like a young reading level, kind of. It's just the font is tiny and it takes me a while to read it. Do I power through? Do I not? I mean, you guys will find out soon, but I could be reading so many other things right now. And she's such a great writer that I'm like, could be anything. I feel like it is so young, but like the characters do go through a lot that that juxtaposition is like making my brain be mush and be like, wait a minute, like, what are we doing? So I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's all I have to update on my reading life right now. Tonight's vegan tacos. So excited.
So I follow this Instagram recipe to make a vegan tofu chocolate mousse. It's actually not, not bad. I'm gonna try it with these strawberries. It's pretty good. Had to hide in the bedroom because Paul's only excited about the Red Wings and MSU basketball today. And I'm like, <laughs> I've read more of book three of the Mercedes Lackey. And I'm not, like I'm having a horrible time at this point. It's like, it's so repetitive. The plot is so basic and small scale. It's like unbelievable. To, like, <sighs> I don't know. I'm not having a fun time reading it anymore, to be honest. However, there have been some positives today that tofu chocolate mousse that I showed you guys can only eat like small bits of it at a time. I don't know how much you're supposed to eat of it, but like I can only do like a little bit. Uh, that was excellent. Um, and then I made a chai latte at home. I've never had one out, but I made a chai latte at home for the first time ever. And my whole life has changed now. Like it's perfection. I never knew that I needed chai latte. I've been obsessed with like matcha lattes at home. I never order drinks when I go out just because I don't care for the amount of sugar that are in like these types of drinks. Just, it makes me feel really ill. So like, I don't ever consume sugar like that. But um, at home, you have the freedom to make it however you want. And like, it is so, so good. It's like drinking a snickerdoodle cookie. <laughs> it's like, why did I never know about this? I think I'm gonna hang out in here and read for a little bit with my latte. Vlogging is going to be minimal today because I look a little bit scary right now. I'm not going to lie. Actually, my eye like kind of looks like I belong in Dune or something. Every single time I work in my basement, which uh, I think I took some vlog clips yesterday, every single time I do like um, anything with sawdust and I wasn't even near the sawdust. This is what my eye does after. Like it's, I don't know what's happening. It's a bad time all around, but I did finish a book. I had insomnia horribly last night. I was up since 3.30 and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna finish this book because I kind of want to get done with it anyways. I feel bad. You guys should look away. I should show you the cats instead of you looking at my face right now because it's so scary. But I finished Arrow's Fall, which is book three in the Heralds of Valdemar. I do think it was quite an improvement from book one. I liked the characters more. Um, the character that I so despised in book two had quite the character arc and grew a lot and um, became way better of a character in book three so I'm definitely glad to see that character arc and character growth. I liked where the story went. I thought like overall it was a lot better but at the same time I still find myself being kind of bored or struggling to care and there's definitely some issues like she put some heavy things like there's a lot of death there's a lot of assault and rape like a lot of rape in this and it's just like not it's just kind of brushed over. There's also the issue of like magic being used to sort of take away pain and, and trauma and things like that. So that goes on in all of these books. And sometimes I like question how I feel about that for characters. So you definitely have that as an element. Um, so I'm really, really torn because overall, I think I gave this three and a half stars. That's being pretty generous. The reason it's three and a half is because I really think she has great writing and I really enjoy reading her writing style or I never would have made it through all 660 pages. I think that overall, I've just, the plots are so basic. I, I really do like our main character. I don't mind her, but I just think like each of these books should have been 400, 500 pages, something like that. It should have been fleshed out so much more to get me to care. But then again, was this written for a younger audience? I don't know who its target audience was for at the time. So it's hard for me to say like, oh, it should have been this when if I was a young child reading this, it would have been perfect, right? Like if you are a young kid, but then again, the death and rapes that happen, like you're not reading this as a young child, even though it's not like uh, graphic or on, on page at all. It's not like disturbing to read, it's just mentioned. I still don't feel like it's geared towards a young audience when it comes to that aspect of this. So I'm very, very, very torn of what to do. I have another friend that I'm reading this with that feels kind of like me, like, do I pick up more? Do I not? There are so many books in the Valdemar series in general. I've already purchased one of the newer ones, so I kind of feel like I should continue on so that I'm able to get to that book, um, but that's not the next in line. So then like, where do I go from there? I don't know. And then I sort of feel like there are so many other things I want to read right now. There's so many rereads I want to do or just new and interesting things. It's like, did I have an overall good time reading this? Not really, like it's kind of like comforting in the way that it's written. Like I said, her writing is just really like a warm hug type of feeling. So that's why I like it. 
but did I have fun? Was I that interested? No. And I'll tell you guys like about what I'm reading right now in a couple of minutes where I was just like instantly gripped and entertained from like page one, it hooked me. And I'm like, I could be just reading books like this. So I'm very, very torn because another friend that we're reading it with is definitely gonna continue on. So right now there's like a 50-50 split. I, if I had to say I'm leaning more one way than the other, I would say I there's just like the tiniest little sway towards continuing on and reading more in this world, only in hopes that, I mean, this was, the beginning I think of this series I don't know I, I just hope that the other books are maybe more fleshed out and a little more in depth and she improved upon like the plot I, I really don't know because this isn't like her first series by any means so it's not like this is ground zero like breaking like starting point so that really just confuses me even more if I had to place money on it right now I would say like yeah I'm gonna continue but if I get distracted by other things, who knows? I really don't know what to do. I'm gonna update you guys in a little bit about what I started next, because like I said, I'm really enjoying it and it just feels good to be in something entertaining right now. It has taken me so long. I had an hour and five minutes of vlog footage last week. I don't know what I was thinking. And this girl's waiting for some attention. Come here, lover. Are you mad at me? Yeah. Okay, so the other book that I started this morning after my bout of insomnia, is one that my friends are all reading and I'm, I have horrible FOMO right now because they're all reading and loving it and continuing on. And that is Lady of Darkness by Melissa K. Rowrich. Um, and I think this is a series that has like several books out already. I didn't realize that until I opened it up this morning. It appears there's like five in a novella. I'm not sure. And then there's a new series coming out. So as long as I continue to like this, it's really good because this author seems to be writing a lot. Um, this reminds me a little bit of a couple things. It gave me a little bit of Serpent in the Wings of Night vibes, and then it also gave me a little bit of Spark of the Everflame vibes, just with like a couple different aspects, but both of those are books that I have enjoyed and really good things. I'm not gonna read the back of the book for you guys because I don't really know more than the couple of pages I am. I mean, I'm on page 75 out of let's see how long this is 525 maybe something like that and we're following this girl who was like part of this group of basically like assassins they call themselves there's like death incarnate and there's death's maiden basically she this girl scarlet is trying to get revenge and does in the very first scene for the person that killed her mother that was supposed to kill her too and you kind of are left there was there was somebody else there that night and she's trying to like torture it out of him um but he doesn't say who it is and then years have gone by she's 19 now and she's living in this like almost like royalty type of setting. So it's very different from what she's used to because she's like a not properly brought up woman. Um, she doesn't like being called a lady. She doesn't like being told what to do. So being in this setting, having to be like proper all the time, she's not a fan of. And then she encounters this man one day with her friends. Well, one, her one friend, it's like Nuri or something like that. She delivers a message from this I don't know, man, I can't remember what they call him, but basically he was like the leader of their little group that trained them and has them like assassinate people. And she wants to deliver a message from him saying like, hey, come back to me. I'm gonna give you the name of the person who was there that night your mother was killed and you can kill them. Around that same time, one of her friends brings this like captain of the army type of thing to their house and she tries, she like is instigating a fight kind of and realizes that he is really, really good and well-trained and wants her him to train her um, just because he's trained very differently when it comes to fighting and I'm sure she wants to just like improve her assassination skills so we're kind of watching that situation happen there are fae in this and it's kind of divided up into lands of like it's like ice wind fire maybe air I don't remember all of them specifically and the humans and fae are very divided there was this war in the past so like a lot of world building has happened already in these 75 pages. I'm really excited to see where it's going to go. I'm very, very much loving Reich and Scarlet, our two main characters. And I'm really interested to learn more about the world building and sort of how the Fae and humans are connected. And Reich definitely has like a deeper motive than just helping her train. So I'm curious to see where that goes as well as kind of what Scarlet gets up to in still hopes of revenge for her mother. So we'll see where this goes, but really, really liking it so far. 
I wanted to show you guys my latest obsession and it is mixing fruit with vegan yogurt and covering it in chocolate and putting it in the freezer. And it is so, so yummy. I'm really excited about tonight's dinner. I don't know if Paul's gonna like his, but it is kale, tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, roasted chickpeas, roasted sweet potato, like a homemade tahini, lime garlic, not lime, lemon garlic, dressing and topped with pine nuts. So I actually kind of hope I don't hate it too. I'm nervous about the dressing to be honest, but it looks pretty. like Monday morning and you would just do anything to stay home with your fur babies all day instead of go to work. That's me today. Love you little ladies. I'm like 100% a romanticize your life girly and I swear to you no matter what food or beverage you have if it's in a pretty dish, pretty jar, pretty glass it tastes 100 times better. So romanticize your life. Do the little things. Okay, did I show you guys? I'm doing sourdough starter again. So I made it for a while last year and then I got kind of um, annoyed with doing it. I started in this container. This is my discard right now, but I'm feeding the discard. And then I have this one because this jar is like a little small for me right now. I mean, technically it's like the appropriate size, but we'll see because it's way, it's so much easier to mix in something like this, but like, I don't want to use plastic. Um, so it's not usable yet. It's a I don't know, maybe six or something like that. We'll see how long until it's usable. But I thought I would take you guys along on the process. Look how good and bubbly my matcha looks today. Mm. Hey guys, it's Monday. It's actually like a great Monday for once other than sad eye situation that I'm still dealing with. But I'm just making a chai latte at home, which I think it was this vlog that I discovered is like my favorite thing. I'm obsessed with it. I absolutely love it. I just finished my salad. Watching a couple YouTube videos. I'm so selective on what YouTube I watch anymore and yeah i just wanted to update with lady of darkness i'm still having a good time with it i don't have the book with me right now i am pretty nitpicky okay because there's like some things that i have a problem with some things that are like a bit kind of annoying to me but not enough to where i'm not enjoying it like don't get me wrong i'm fully thoroughly enjoying it as like fun candy entertainment but like there's a miscommunication trope not even that it's more like two characters at war with each other who hate each other well she hates him because they won't give each other any answers or information it's like that's fine for like a scene but like five scenes in a row are you gonna answer my questions no are you gonna answer my questions no and then you just like continue like it's too much for me but i am intrigued about the world if we can just like move past this little section. So I'm nearly halfway through. Hopefully I'll have some time and get like halfway through it today. And I think that's all for now. There was definitely something else I came on here to say specifically, but I've forgotten. Okay, I have some leftover tofu chocolate mousse I made the other day and my beautiful chai freaking latte at lunchtime and I could not be more thrilled. And we have a little owl. Hi honey. She's like, you don't see me. No one is here. Okay, I decided to have uh, some chocolate banana mini muffins too. So whoever says eating healthy vegan is boring, you're wrong. On today's episode of The Weather in Michigan, we must be under a wind advisory today. It's like insanely windy. Okay, so my best friend that is also doing her own sourdough recommended this book, so I got it. And I already made a change based on like some of the information she has in the beginning. And I think it's already helping my starter. Because I think last year when I was doing my sourdough starter, I don't think I was vlogging or doing booktube at all. So hopefully I'll show you guys some of the creations I make eventually once I get my sourdough starter going and good and ready to go and matcha time. I, I, have, I have to update, but like I also have to go to work. Do you guys remember when we used to do vlog updates as I was like making lunch? Because that's like all the time I had. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm making lunch, but I really wanted to update about what I've been reading. So I'm on page like 330-ish, something like that, of Lady of Darkness. Can't hold the book up right now. This book, I am so back and forth torn all the time. Like part of it, I'm reading it and I'm like, okay, yeah, this is like a solid fantasy romance. Like I could recommend this. And then next thing you know, I'm like, this is a two-star book, I'm so mad. So I don't know where. I fall right now on the spectrum. Hold on. 
I have so many issues because this book is so much like other books. Now, I don't know whose fault that is. I don't know which books were published first in which order and what have you. So I can't say that like one was copying the other, that kind of thing. But it has basically one trope that's exactly the same as Serpent in the Wings of Night, one trope that's exactly the same as Spark of the Everflame. Um, what's the other trope? I just got to a part a minute ago where I was like, oh my God, the same trope is something else. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like this is a combo. But then again, I don't know when this came out. So I don't want to fault it for copying because I mean, I can't say, but it is very, very similar to a lot of other books. Now I have this issue because one, the love interest who to begin with, I was really, really enjoying his character a lot. Like I was like, okay, you're kind of shining. But then he goes and he does this thing where he calls her love and he, uh, I'm gonna like break my hand and or knife trying to get the pit out of this avocado. Like what the heck? whatever. So he calls her love and she explicitly, repeatedly asks him time and time again to not call her love. I don't care. In no world is that cute where you explicitly ask a man to stop doing something and he continues to do it. I like, I will never, ever, ever be okay with that. I don't care what, if it's like, I am not the girl that's ever here for the flirting that's like antagonistic or the like play mean flirting or anything like that. So maybe if you're a girl who likes those things, like maybe you won't care as much, but like, I hate those things. And so in my mind, I'm like, you disrespectful son of a, you know what? She asked you not to call her that and you keep calling her that. So where do you get off? Where do you get off? Where do you get the audacity thinking that you can disrespect her direct wishes. Not cute, not cute anytime in my opinion. But that's cause like I'm dating a literal angel because my expectations for men are like beyond sky high. Like if I ask you something one time, you better respect me. Uh, so that's like a huge turnoff already. Can't stand that. Other than that, I do enjoy his character. I ranted a little bit, I think, about the other things that were already bothering me uh, about the like, let's be mad at each other and not tell each other anything. So, I mean, that somewhat continues. Obviously, we're gonna get past that point because it is a fantasy romance book. But then the other thing is, I love the main character when she turns into this like harsh, scary death maiden who she's supposed to be. Although we never really get to see it in act just like little glimpses and i really like her when she's like harsh and cold like that like she the author pulls that off well but you're like they refer to her as like being in this cage and like let it out let it out and i'm like i want to see more of that i feel like we did not get to see nearly enough of that it was not brought out from this like past life that she led with these other three girls and that just kind of is problematic like doesn't show me enough of the history. Now, the third thing, I don't know what number we're on now, that really just drives me up a wall, is the rest of the time this main character is insufferable. She like stays in bed for days at a time crying and like being upset about things. And I'm like, no, like I haven't seen or been told or heard anything about your backstory enough to make me believe it's realistic for a human being to remain in bed for three freaking days. And I'm not talking about the stuff in reference to her ailment, cause yeah, I guess they explain that away. I'm talking about the other stuff when she's just like upset. So I know at this point, this probably just sounds like crazy nitpicky and crazy like over the top, but that's just how I'm feeling at this moment in time. I feel like it's two stars one minute, three and a half stars another minute. It's never been above a three and a half in my mind. Even though I like, I think the world is good, but it's only good because it's borrowed from so many things I already love, maybe. I don't know. And I'm not usually one to complain about if um, like plots and world building aspects and things like that are too similar. Hence the uh, first binding and people being like, oh, it's just a direct copy of The Name of the Wind. And I'm like, I don't care, I love them both. I'll keep reading it. I'll read that forever. This isn't like the case like that. Like, I don't know. It just, I also hate like shifters and anything paranormal. Like I don't want to read about another vampire or shifter or werewolf for as long as I live. Like I just literally hate 
paranormal so much. So you guys, I know that's not been helpful, but it's just like a weird reading experience I'm having at the moment. Okay, got part of my lunch here. Uh, we'll have to see how this goes. Cause as of right now, like I don't think I would continue on. The only way I would continue on is if I'm really bored, if I get burnt out on other things and I just like need something quick and easy. It's so quick and easy to read that you fly through it, which sometimes can be nice. But as of right now, I will not continue the series, but I still have a hundred and I have almost 200 pages to go. Yeah, I have just about 200 pages to go. So a lot could happen in that time. We'll see, I'm not gonna make any promises one way or another. And then I found myself, believe it or not, missing the Mercedes Lackey world. I think I've just read so many three-star books lately. So I miss Mercedes Lackey. I have another friend who's gonna continue on with the last Herald Mage or something like that. I'm gonna continue on next month too. I'm so torn right now where I'm in a mood that there's nothing perfect. I don't know if you could write me the perfect book at this moment in time. Do you guys ever feel that way? It's either too dense or it's too light and fluffy. I'm having problems with, like I'm just in a nitpicky mood. Please tell me that you guys sometimes are in nitpicky moods where it's like no matter what author wrote something right now, like you're probably gonna find a problem with it. I'm a pretty harsh raider, anyways I feel I mean it's so far on the spectrum I do give a lot of five star reads but like I also give two stars no problem like I do not feel bad writing something two stars so I feel like I have pretty high standards and just nothing's like meeting the mark right now it's kind of a bummer I'm just not gonna stop about the chai latte on my lunch break that makes everything in life better I'm not gonna stop on today's episode of you're not supposed to be here Rana are you Yes, mommy. Are you supposed to be in the bed? I'm just asking, if you guys came home to this on your lunch break, like, would you ever go back to work? Because I, I cannot. Ladies? I love you. Come here. Aoli is being a little shy, of course. Poor girl. She looks like such a big kitty and she weighs like one pound. She is all fluff. Another day, another lunch break, a vlog update. But okay, you guys, today I did get to finish Lady of Darkness. I know that I was hating on this yesterday. Like I tore this apart, was not having it. I was not living for it. I have to say the last 200 pages really did pull through for me and make me enjoy it to the point where I can't wait to continue on. That being said, I did still end up rating it like 3.75 out of five stars because I did have some major issues with the, the construction of the first 300 pages and that it wasn't original. Like there's nothing in this at all that is original nothing. It's all borrowed ideas or reused. I don't know how I want to say it exactly, but like nothing in this feels new. I have to say some of the issues I had with Scarlett's character were expanded upon and fleshed out and you get more reasoning. Personally, I think it took a little too long. It was like this big shocking reveal rather than just like understanding her character. So I had issues with that, but it sort of negated what I said yesterday. And then you can have more understanding as to why her behavior was the way that it was at the time being. We also do see some character growth in one of the characters who kind of doesn't respect her wishes. There were two reveals in this that I was like, I almost had to throw the book down and walk away. Granted, had I been paying enough attention, I definitely should have predicted them, but I didn't. And there is nothing better than when you don't predict the reveal, when you don't predict the twist that is coming and you are just shocked, like what, girl, what? And I wished that I had someone to talk to so badly in person right at the time that it was happening. So for that alone, I'm very excited to continue on. I like where we left off in this world. And so that gives me hope that like book two will bring a lot of new things in that area and maybe we'll get some bigger world building, which is what I feel like I really missed out on this. So I still do have a lot of small nitpicks, but overall it reads so quickly and was very, very entertaining. So I'm settling on like 3.75 out of five stars and I will get to book two hopefully soon. I would like to get to it in April, but who knows timing wise. So that's where I'm at here. 
And then I'm still listening to The Machine Crusade. And it's getting a little bit more character driven at this point. I think there's a little more like philosophy monologues that some of the thinking machines have that I appreciate. So I don't know. It's like I need to have a day where I could just listen to a big long chunk of this at one time to really just like engulf myself in it. Um, but that being said, like it's just like three, three and a half star read right now. But I'm still having a good time with it. It's just these books are very long. They're almost 30 hour long audiobooks, which is a pretty big book. So it just takes a lot to get through when it's not maybe the best thing I've ever read. But like I said, there were a little bit more of the philosophical elements in this that I missed from Frank Herbert's writing and a lot of discussion about religion that I appreciate and enjoy the discussion of. So I'm liking those. And now the fun part is I get to pick up a new book. So that's very exciting. One of my favorite, favorite feelings in the world is when I finish a book and then get to go to the bookshelf and pick up a new one and decide what to read next. I swear to God, like one of my favorite things in life. So we're going to do that. On my TBR cart, this I can't read yet because I haven't read far enough in the series. This I'm waiting on the audiobook. And then this is an option. So To Bleed a Crystal Bloom is one. And then this is my haul shelf. So I've already read a couple of these. So as far as things I don't have planned exactly, I can go with Where the Dark Stands Still or Lore of the Wilds. I think I'm going to choose Lore of the Wilds, honestly. Ooh, she's steaming. But this is my deconstructed stuffed pepper with vegan parm and a filling of cauliflower rice, zucchini, and mushroom. And it is so freaking good, you guys. Can't wait to eat it. Might be a little too hot. You guys, look at all the bubbles. It's doing so well, I'm so excited. But I just got my little official jar. Let me show you. I'm so excited, this is the best day. This corner is so dark. Oh, you can see me. But there she is, discarded and fed. And we're gonna make some homemade sourdough rolls for Easter. Okay, here is the Dutch oven that I ordered that just came in the mail too. And it's basically time to make some bread now. So excited, you guys. Got some other random stuff in the mail. This book, uh, we'll talk about that later. I'm very excited about it. I'm gonna start dry brushing for lymphatic drainage. So I got this. And I don't know what kind of order, so I got this gua sha uh, stone for now. Those two things. It's a good day. It's kind of weird that it's already time to end this vlog. I don't know what's going on this week. I feel like this week's vlog is going to be very short, but who knows, maybe I'll get to the editing portion and be like last week where it was like over an hour and I was like, girl, you gotta stop. Um, so anyways, look at these cute little Studio Ghibli stickers my friend at work gave me today. When she went to Chicago. Oh my God, I love them. Um, that's not neither here nor there. I want to talk about, I have no updates on the Machine Crusades. As of right now, I mean like everything's the same. Sorry that that's boring. Now let's talk about Lore of the Wilds by Annalise Sprana because this is what I started yesterday night and I didn't get far into it and I was like enamored. I absolutely loved the beginning of it. It was so like whimsical. We have a magical library setting. So this girl lives in this small village of humans. They're the only humans and everyone else is fae. Basically they're like trapped to this land. They cannot leave. They're not allowed to escape or go anywhere else. And the fae don't even really care or know that they're there other than to like take their money and taxes and all that stuff. One day there's like this earthquake and the people are injured. A lot of their stuff is damaged. And then our main character, Lore, is taken away by two fae who task her with sorting through this magical library. And if she finds any magical tomes, she's to bring them to the fae like leaders immediately. Um, so that's where we start out. And oh my God, it was delightful. I loved the writing. I loved the whimsy. I loved the characters and the setting. I thought it was really wowing. And then I got farther into it and I just was really disappointed. So right now, I'm really struggling with what I'm going to rate it. I mean, ugh, it's really hard. I'm not finished yet. I'm on page 292 out of 338. So not that much left to go. Now here are my main criticisms. This is about a middle grade reading level, in my opinion. Now, should you hand this to your middle graders? That's up to parental discretion. I mean, there's a couple cuss words and a couple steamy scenes. Nothing is like 
in depth or like said on page. I mean, I would, I would definitely allow a teenager of mine to read this 110%, um, like a young teen, but the sentence structure and the actual like writing itself is middle grade level. Like Shannon Messenger, uh, Keeper of the Lost Cities, I think has like more in depth sentence. I mean, I, I'm not trying to say that to sound mean. Uh, it, it's just so you know what you're getting into. So if you're going to pick this up and you're like, I want something that is so easy to read that I don't have to like think at all. And you just want to be entertained by a story, then go for this. If you're like, no, I, I want a little bit more thickness to have to use my brain. Don't go for this. So just like go with the right timing. Uh, there's also a whole like plot thread at the end that, um, I completely had to suspend my disbelief the entirety of the time because I was like, wait, no, that was way too easy. Also, we leave the library at some point, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but to go on this quest, and I immediately was like, oh, FML, because I cannot stand quest stories anymore. I used to hear people say that and be like, but what do you mean? I love quest stories. And I have read so many this year and every single one I've hated because I've been like, let me stay where I am. Like we can move around. We don't have to stay in the same exact place, but please for the love of freaking God, let us not start a journey. No destination really in mind. And we're just going to go from place to place to place. Like I'd rather die. Like I just, I can't tell you how much I hate that. So um, I think the characters are rather delightful in this. I think the relationship dynamics are really interesting because she kind of has a crush on multiple people I feel like there's a lot of like great representation in this and I just think like there's a lot of elements I really do like but then also there's a lot that are just skimmed over and because it's so skimmed over and not fully fleshed out that also makes it feel way more on the younger end of YA that I, I mean I don't know I, I guess I was told that this is adult and I it's a $28 hardcover so I mean that would lead me to believe that it's adult but in my mind it's it's absolutely not adult I mean like of course an author can write something for a particular audience but for this adult it reads young YA in my opinion so I know that kind of sounds like I'm trashing it I am very back and forth on how I feel I still think there's a lot of great aspects and elements. So I suppose we'll see about how the last like 40, 50 pages wrap up. Hopefully it gives like a nice strong ending. I just knew when we left the magical setting, it was going to go downhill. Uh, so maybe if you know that ahead of time, you will do better with it. Um, but yeah, this is just, I mean, I read it. I'm going to finish it tonight and then I'll let you guys know uh, before I fully close out this vlog. But I read it in like a couple of hours, basically. That's how easily it reads. So I, I don't have regrets necessarily. It's just like as of right now, I wouldn't continue, I guess I would say. So that's all for now. I have a lot to do, so I'm gonna go start doing it. This is gonna be the last dinner update of this vlog. Spicy peanut noodles with cow flour. Can you tell I put a little too much turmeric, perhaps? <laughs> One thing I did want to mention before I forget about the Brian Herbert, Kevin J. Anderson books, um, the Machine Crusade it is. So before I was like, oh yeah, uh, no real comments and stuff. I have to say it is so focused on like relationships and romantic relationships and love that that's very shocking to me. Doesn't feel like super Frank Herbert in, in Dune, in my opinion. The other thing is that people were saying about book one, I think it was Quinn's ideas. I can't remember if I said this in the last vlog, that it's definitely set up in Brian Herbert's books that it's man versus machine. That is not the way that Frank Herbert set it up. Frank Herbert set it up more like man versus man who relies upon the machine. So that was an interesting difference. And then the one thing that's driving me absolutely insane right now is the ageism. And like maybe a little bit of sexism, but mostly like ageism. Like everything is pointed out about a woman's age. Is it pointed out about the man's age? Mm -mm. Or the man's appearance based on his age? Mm -mm. Just the women. She's pretty for her age. Even though she's 40, she's pretty. Like, sir, sir, you don't need the... She's pretty for her age. Mm -mm, she's pretty. So that is just like, huh, killing me. So there's the end of that rant. Okay, so I've added the starter, the salt, the water, the flour, and I've got to let it rest for an hour before we stretch it twice. We're in the process, guys.
just finished this book, War of the Wilds, and it was preposterous. Like, it went downhill so much, it's not even funny. The amount that I had to suspend my disbelief was to the point where, like, I didn't even care because it was almost, like, laughable. Like, what happens in the end of this book is just, like, it, it, I, can't, I can't, I cannot wrap my mind around this book being published for, like, what happens with the plot there's a reveal that's supposed to be like some huge twist and I 100% saw it coming from the absolute very first interaction uh knew that that was the case and I was just like waiting for that to happen but besides that they face no actual real threats they are able to accomplish every task with no hindrance, there's no risk of any character dying or like any consequences. And it's all like so glossed over. There's nothing like fully fleshed out in the descriptions. That's what I'm saying. This truly feels like a middle grade story, like a young middle grade story because of not just the reading level, but the plot with I mean, there is like two scenes in it that are like adult that you wouldn't want a middle grade kid reading. Maybe, maybe two and a half. I don't know. I just, there's, I like this world and this had so much potential and I like some of the characters and I'm interested in like what could possibly be a side romance between the characters. But besides that, I would have to hear that book two improves tremendously before picking up book two because if the plot is anything like this one I mean it was a disaster it was horrible I'm not sorry you guys it's me again I'm still sitting here thinking about how bad that book was it's been like 20 minutes yeah thank god I read it with a friend and we were both like this is a trash fire of a plot I don't sound of words I can't say it without spoiling things but I came back to say only that I rated it two stars and that's being kind of generous two stars Two star read. So we're gonna end the vlog. I really need whatever I pick up next to be best. Oh, maybe I should show you the sourdough progression here. But you'll have to see the end of it. Look at this, it's coming. Ugh. In next week's vlog, we might go to an art museum. Hopefully. We did the stretch and fold process one time. Hopefully it's looking right. Okay, we stretched and folded it for the second time. You guys are gonna have to wait till next week to see the result of the sourdough bread loaf. Hopefully it turns out great. If you've made it this far, give me some kind of bread <laughs> emoji. I'm assuming there's some bread emojis. There's one bread emoji. Is there, I mean, there's gotta be like a bread stick too or something. There's a, there's a pretzel, you can make bread pretzels. So any kind of bread emoji. And let me know what you guys ended up reading this past week. I hope you guys are having a great Monday, great start to your week. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. I've been